Hello, today I'm going to present our work on Melissa and Millicorby. This is a joint work with my colleague Sojourn Park and my advisor John Ostout. One benefit of data center computing is the ability to harness the large number of machines available in a data center. However, today's data center applications basically couple scale and time. For example, batch processing applications can easily scale to thousands of nodes, but they also run for minutes or hours in order to amortize the cost of orchestrating a cluster. In contrast, serverless computing can support short tasks, but a scale of computation is limited to a single lambda function. In this project, we decided to explore the possibility of a new style of data center computing that we call flash burst. Flash bursts combine large scale computation with low latency. It can use hundreds or thousands of machines but only for a few milliseconds. And we think this is exciting because it will allow us to analyze large amounts of data in real time. Our major goal of this project is to understand the limits of flash burst. For example, we're trying to answer questions like, what's the smallest possible time scale for flash burst to operate efficiently? What's the largest number of machines that can be harnessed in such time intervals? And what aspects of the current systems limit the duration and scale of flash burst? To understand the challenge of harnessing a lot of machines in milliseconds, we developed two example applications called Millisort and Millicrew. Millisort is a distributed sorting application and Millicrew implements three representative SQL queries. The common goal of both applications is to process as much data as possible in one millisecond, given unlimited resources in a data center. To make things simpler, we assume that input data are already loaded in memory before the application starts. We learned quite a few from our experiments. First of all, we confirmed that it's indeed possible to harness hundreds of servers efficiently, even within one millisecond. Second, we observed that the total data that can be processed increase at least quadratically with the time. Finally, we identified two primary limiting factors to scalability. One is the overhead to coordinated behavior of servers, and the other is the cost of shoveling data in a cluster. Ultimately, both factors can be attributed to small message throughput, that is, how fast a server can send and receive small messages. Normally, People either care about latency for small messages or network bandwidth for large messages. But we found that small message throughput is more important here because flash bursts tend to generate many small messages. As far as we know, no one has attempted to do distributed sorting in one millisecond. This turns out to be very challenging because sorting has a complex data form. Any record may end up on any server after sorting and we have to develop new algorithms to make Millisort work. At a high level, Millisort chose to implement the distributed bucket sort algorithm, which is bandwidth optimal because any record is transmitted at most once over the network. There are four basic steps. The first step is local sort. Each server sorts its initial data. The second step is partitioning, that is to find out the key range each server stores after the sorting. Finally, each server transmits its records to the target servers based on the key range partition they agreed on and merge sort incoming records as they arrive. Millisort uses an approach called regular sampling to decide bucket boundaries. It works as follows. After the local records are sorted, each server samples the keys at equal space intervals to approximate its key distribution. Then the samples are gathered to a central server and sorted. Finally, the central server chooses the bucket boundary splitters that divide the samples equally. Unfortunately, a single node can sort the samples fast enough. If we have 300 servers and each server collects 300 samples, just sorting the 90,000 samples will take more than two milliseconds, already exceeding our time budget. To avoid a central bottleneck, we apply a novel recursive scheme. Instead of using a single server, we select a small group of servers to do another distributed bucket sort of the samples, and we can apply the recursion more times to handle even larger clusters. Due to time limit, we have to skip the details of Millicrary, but roughly speaking, Q1 is just an embarrassingly parallel scan aggregate query. Q2 is slightly more complex because it requires a shuffle step before the aggregation. Q3 is most complex. It has a distributed join operation that requires multiple shuffles to implement. Overall, 
middle store and milk query capture a wide range of interesting behaviors in data analytics workload. We evaluate middle store and milk query on an HPC cluster. Each HPC node has 40 cores and 100 gigabits per second network. Our prototype is built on top of RAN Cloud's transport system, which uses kernel bypass to provide 5 microsecond message round trip times and 25 gigabits per second throughput on our testbed. Unfortunately, our message throughput is limited by the single dispatch thread in RAM Cloud. This prevents us from scaling the message throughput by adding more cores. As a result, we run four independent servers on each machine, and each server has eight cores and 25 gigabits per second network bandwidth. We were able to get 70 machines, that's a total of 280 servers. These two tables summarize the, the overall performance of Mellistor and Millicory in 1 and 10 milliseconds. The left table shows the largest amount of data that can be processed by each of the applications, and the right table shows the corresponding number of servers harnessed. For example, these two cells indicate that Millistor can store 0.84 million records using 120 servers in 1 millisecond. Note that the asterisk in the table in this indicates that the result is actually limited by the number of servers available in our experiment and does not reflect the true limit. There are two takeaways here. First, in one millisecond, all applications except Q3 can harness more than 100 servers. Second, in 10 milliseconds, all applications can scale beyond 280 servers. Finally, the, table, the left table indicates that a super linear increase in the amount of data that can be processed with a time budget. To better understand the scaling properties of flashbursts, we focus on smaller time scales where we're not limited by our cluster size. This graph shows the total number of records that can be processed as a function of time budget. Different lines represent different applications. Note that the y-axis uses normalized values instead of absolute values. That is, we normalize the total number of records processed by an application to a value of one for a one millisecond time budget for that application. For example, the red line says when a time budget increased from one millisecond to two millisecond, Millistor can store 4.5x data. In this graph, all applications except Q1 shows at least quadratic scaling behavior. In fact, Q1 would actually scale exponentially if more servers were available. Further measurements in the paper suggest that both the number of servers and the amount of data per server grow at least linearly with the time budget. The quadratic scaling behavior also suggests that the total data that can be processed drops rapidly as time budget becomes smaller. With 0.5 milliseconds, none of the applications can do much work. To illustrate what we'll limited applications' ability to harness more servers, this table breaks down the time span on each millisor phase with two different cluster sizes. The amount of data per server is fixed at 7,000 records. The table shows that when the number of servers is doubled, the cost of local sort and rearrangement remain almost the same. However, both the partitioning and shuffle costs roughly double. This is because both costs here are mostly dominated by small message throughput, and each server has to send twice the messages when the cluster size is doubled. Milliquery has similar results, so we conclude that coordination and shuffles are the primary limiting factors for scalability. Their costs increase with the cluster size due to small message throughput. Finally, this table compares the sorting throughput of Millisort at 10 milliseconds with other distributed sorting systems. Different systems use very different hardware, so we present the throughput in the number of records per millisecond per core for a more direct comparison. In short, Millisort's per core throughput compares quite favorably to other systems that are designed to run at much larger timescales. To conclude, we believe flashbursts in general don't necessarily need to sacrifice efficiency in order to operate at millisecond timescale. It's not surprising that there's currently no flash burst application as today's infrastructure doesn't support them. However, I would like to at least provide some speculation on how flash burst can be useful in the future and the problems yet to be solved. First of all, is one to 10 milliseconds the right target? 
After all, it could take more than 100 milliseconds today just to communicate with a data center. Fortunately, recent edge computing offerings have started to provide sub-10 millisecond latency between the end user and an edge cloud, which makes computation at millisecond timescale more relevant. Second, it appears that the most promising applications that can benefit from flash bursts will be those that make real-time decisions without humans in the loop. This is because if the final co consumer of the computation is human, then it doesn't matter if the computation takes a few hundred milliseconds. Some examples are IoT devices and financial applications. Flash bursts will enable these applications to run data-intensive algorithms at millisecond time scale. In this project, we deliberately took many shortcuts to focus on the basic properties of flash bursts. As a result, many interesting problems are left as future work. For example, flash bursts typically have low duty cycles. So how can we collocate flash bursts with bad jobs to achieve high CPU efficiency without hurting its performance? And how can we load input data efficiently from storage servers? Finally, our eventual goal is to develop develop a general purpose infrastructure for flash burst. This requires us to design all the components involved in its lifetime with low latency in mind. To conclude, we demonstrate that flash burst is feasible for several core patterns in data analytics. Both millisort and milliquery can harness more than 100 servers efficiently within one millisecond. We also found that small massive throughput is the primary limiting factor to scalability. For flash bursts, it's at least as important as traditional metrics like latency and bandwidth. Finally, we hope our results will encourage application developers to start exploring the practical usage of flashbirds. This is the end of the talk, and I'm happy to take questions.